Hey Karnak here, Star Wars Armada Explained. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to be looking at a Rebel Squadron, the Hawk 290. Not a Star Hawk, just a regular Hawk Squadron. That's just what they're called. I don't make the rules. So the Hawk 290, so far there's a generic version and then there's two uniques, one of them being New and Rebellion of the Rim. So the Hawk is a Rebel Squadron. You can see there the Squadron symbol. In the bottom left hand corner you'll see the Squadron icon. To the right, you're going to see how many point costs it is, which is 12 points. Um, so this squadron, if you go back up, you'll see the, the yellow box going from left to right. The yellow box signifies the distance the squadron can travel, which is up to distance 3. It has 4 hull points. It throws an anti-squadron armament of 2 blue die. And it throws an anti-ship armament in the red box there of 1 blue die. The keywords that it gets is counter 2 and intel. Uh, so let's go through these keywords real quick. So counter two is whenever that squadron is attacked, it gets to counter back with two blue die. So real quick, we're going to say, you know what, this TIE Defender is going to fly up. He's going to shoot the Hawk, and he's going to roll some damages here. And man, he just one-shots the, uh, the, uh, the Hawk. Poor, poor little guy. Hold on, my vassal sound is like crazy high right now. There we go. So the, the Hawk dies, but even though he's dead, he still can counter back with two blue dives. So he's going to counter back, and hey, he got one damage back on the TIE Defender. So that's how counter works. Let's go ahead and uh, restore his hit points here. Alright, now how does the keyword intel work? So intel is while an enemy squadron is at distance one of you, it has heavy. So... What is, why is that important? Well, squadrons that have heavy do not prevent another squadron from moving away from it. And it also doesn't stop a squadron from attacking a ship. Essentially, it's just it's a big old, like, big heavy bomber. It doesn't have the maneuverability to keep other squadrons away from attacking ships or getting away from them. Um, so what does Intel do? Example, these TIE Defenders do not have heavy. If I was to run up like an X-Wing or a TIE Fighter into this TIE Defender, they essentially are now engaged to the death. There's, there's no way to disengage. They're stuck there forever. So what Intel does is at distance one of you, so you'll see here there's a little distance one bubble around you, so any squadron at distance one now has heavy, meaning that if, for example, all these TIE Defenders were in cage with somebody like uh, Kane and Jarrus, who can't get away, this Hawk could fly up and be like, Haha, uh, all you squadrons are now heavy. Now Kane and Jarrus can move and get away from them. Um, and now they're stuck fighting my, my poor little Hawk that's just going to get murdered. Um, so, you know, escort is typically also something you want to bring along with these guys. But anyway, that's essentially how this works. Again, if there's like an enemy ship and all these tight def defenders were in front of this enemy ship saying, Haha, you can't shoot the enemy ship. The Hawk could come up and say, well, guess what? You all have heavy. Now I can attack the enemy ship and not worry about it. Okay. So that is the generic Hawk. Next up, we've got Jan Orr. She's been a staple in many, many, many Rebel lists because uh, her ability is just freaking fantastic. So to run through real quick, Jan Orr's is unique. You can only have one Jan Orr. She flies the Moldy Crow, which is a unique title. No other squadrons take, can take that title right now, though. Again, speed 3, 4 health. She throws 3 blue anti-dice for anti-squadron. And she has a black die for its anti-ship attack. She's not bomber, so she can only ever score 1 damage. But with a black die, 75% chance. Uh, that's pretty consistent. So again, she also has counter 2 and intel. She's a double brace ace, 19 points. Very reasonable. Uh, so her card ability is... While a friendly squadron at distance 1 to 2 is defending, it can spend your defense tokens. Now, we're going to be diving into her wording and reading, and we're going to be covering a lot of other like different materials that relates to Jan Ors. It's going to get a little confusing. I do apologize. I'll do the best I can to make sure I'm explaining how it all works. But how does her ability work in a nutshell? So let's take this example again of this Hawk. Um, so again, her ability works at distance 1 to 2. So we got distance 1, distance 2. Even if this Hawk was just barely touching, you know, at that distance 2 band, still considered in range of Jan's ability because that is at distance 2. 
We're going to say this TIE Defender is shooting this poor little Hawk guy again. He rolls the two blue, two black, and like, oh man, three damage. That's really going to hurt it. Well, Jan can go, uh, wait, if you want, you can use my defense tokens. And the Hawk's like, oh yeah, so in my spend defense token step, which generic fighters, they don't have defense tokens, but that doesn't mean that their step doesn't exist. It still exists. You go to your spend defense token step and you say, hey, uh, even though I don't have any defensive tokens, it is still the spend defense token step for me. Uh, and Jan Orr's ability says I can spend uh, her defense tokens. So I'm going to spend one of Jan Orr's braces. And I'm going to take that damage from three damage, the two damage. Um, so you can see with Jan Orr's being escorted by like X-Wings or YT-1300s, like you can see like it takes a long time to chew through the escorts because essentially she's making them live way longer than they otherwise could or even just other squadrons that are just getting um, pounded on and just attacked a lot, she can help them out if their defense tokens get accuracied or they get discarded. You know, so very, very useful Janors is. Um, otherwise, all the other same effects as a regular Hawk, other than the fact that, again, other squadrons can use her defensive tokens. Now, she does have one FAQ. Uh, her FAQ reads, unless Janors herself is defending... Her defense tokens cannot be targeted by an accuracy icon's effect. Because uh, people were flying up, attacking the squadron, like, oh, when I spend these accuracies, they'll lock Jan Orr's braces. Like, well, no, you're not attacking Jan Orr's, you're attacking this other squadron. She's, you know, she's nowhere, you're not even shooting any laser bolts at her, you know. So that they wanted to clarify that because some people were saying that you could, obviously you can't. But again, they're just trying to be clear about it. So no... You can't spend accuracies to lock Jan or Orr's braces um, if she's not the defending squadron. If she is the defending squadron, of course you can. Okay, let's move on to... I got quite a few things here in the uh, reference manual. I'm going to be using myself to reference to, just to make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, what about Emperor Palpatine, the commander? Uh, does he does his commander ability resolve against Janor's ability? And the answer is yes, because when Pemper, Emperor Palpatine discards, for example, a brace defense token on his card, it specifically states any time a, a defense token that was the type discarded in this case brace is spent, um, it Palpatine's ability triggers. So even though Janor is again is not being the squadron targeted. She is still having her defense token spent by that squadron. It does get discarded by Emperor Palpatine Commander ability. Okay. Let's talk about Lando Calrissian. I went over this in my Lando Calrissian video. Uh, but can Lando spend Jan Orz's ability uh, to, or defense tokens to power his abilities? Uh, does he come right up to, to Jan Orz and say, Hey, old buddy, old pal, need to borrow your tokens here real quick. Uh, the answer to that is no, he cannot. Not while attacking and not while defending. Because Lando Calrissian, while defending, um, again, he cannot spend defense tokens from Jan Orris to resolve his abilities because it's not one of, in quotations, your defense tokens, as in that squadron's defense tokens. Because when Lando's card ability, again, it says on there, when you spend your tokens, not when you spend someone else's tokens. Okay, want to be very clear uh, definitely has come up once or twice where somebody's like, "Oh yeah, Lando doesn't have any defensive tokens." Well, Jan Orr's, come on over. I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal yours again. That's not how that works, not at all. Uh, so again, Lando cannot steal Jan Orr's defense tokens to power his abilities, not while attacking and not while defending. Okay, again, want to be clear on that. Now here's something that I. Never, I never had any conception of this, and this is something brand new, even for me, experienced player of years. This is the first time I'd ever heard of it, and it's an interaction with Intel Officer. So Intel Officer uh, allows you to target a defense token, and if that defense token is spent, uh, then it's discarded. What I didn't realize is that because of how the Intel Officer is worded and how it's timed, so for example, let's say... Um, I'll need to get a ship out here real quick, just to, just so you guys can absolutely see what I'm trying to, to specify. Sure, Assault Kazanti works, why not? And we'll get the officer card out here. Perfect. Alright, so we're going to say, for example, uh, this hawk is in range, 
Um, and he's got uh, two health left. And Janors is over here at distance one to two. So this Gazanti, um, he's throwing the, the blue flak. We're going to say he's targeting this hawk. And for this purpose, we're going to say one of Janors' defense tokens was already exhausted. So when you attack this hawk, let's say he does throw both blues... And both these blues, like, for example, he threw the die, he has a concentrate fire uh, command. So, let's say that the, or, oh my gosh, let me, let me start over. Let me restart this whole thing. So, again, the first thing you do is you throw your initial attack pool. Boom. Again, with, until uh, officer's timing is. Before you do any modifying steps to that attack, you then declare intel officer. You say, hey, I'm exhausting intel officer, and I'm targeting... Jan Orz's green brace defensive token. And then I'm going to add concentrate fire and roll in uh, this extra uh, blue dice that I have. And hey, that's a hit too, so it's going to kill that hawk. Now, if Jan Orz spends that green brace, she has to discard it because it was targeted by intel officer. Now you might be saying, whoa, 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 whoa. She's not being attacked. How can you do that? Well, because... Of the unique way that this card is written, it just says, while attacking, after you roll your attack pool, you may exhaust this card to choose one defensive token. If that token is spent during this attack, discard that token. It does not specify whose defensive token you are targeting. This is why you can target your own defense token on your own ship when you're attacking, like with Devastator Vader. You, you could target a defense token on an opponent's table across the hall. You could target a defense token. Obviously, you know, don't, don't interact with other people's games. That's not, you know, that, nobody's going to enforce that. But pretty much, if you wanted to target any ship or squadron that has defense tokens on the board, you can technically target that token. It, it doesn't have to be the object that you are attacking. So it blew my mind when I found that out. So there are some very unique situations where, you know what, she's got a spent brace already. She's got a fresh brace. I know she's going to spend a brace on this attack. Might as well target it if I don't have any other valid targets or any other things but I may need to use this card. Might as well exhaust this intel officer, target that fresh brace, and then try to throw as much attack damage at this target as possible to force the discard. Again, it's very niche. It's such a small, tiny use, but it's t it's technically legal. And again, I want to make sure I'm pointing that out because that is a valid interaction for many players. Again, like myself, I've never seen it before. So I just want to make sure I was being clear on that. And this also goes hand in hand with how Avenger works. So uh, when Avenger is attacking a squadron, if Avenger is exhausted for that attack, that squadron cannot spend any of Jan Orr's exhausted defense tokens either. Um, again, because it is that squadron that is spending her tokens. It's not her spending her own tokens. Um, and again, But again, you can't accuracy her tokens because she's not targeted by that attack. But you can still, again, Avenger that squadron because, that again, that squadron it, it itself cannot spend her defense tokens if they're exhausted. I know, like I said, it's a little complicated and a little confusing. You may not understand it. There may not ever be a time you'll ever see this in gameplay, but if it ever comes up, that is how that works and how that resolves. All right, that's Jan Ors. I That's the most we're going we're gonna to get to on that. All right, let's talk about Kanan Jarrus. So Kanan Jarrus, uh, again, unique. You can only have one of them. He flies a generic Hawk 290. Again, distance three four hole he throws two blue one red anti-squadron and he throws two blue uh dice uh for anti-ship attack which that's really he's 19 points as well double brace and just like wow for for rebels especially if he's backed up by torn fire essentially he's he's a presido bomber he does not have the bomber keyword he has the assault keyword cloak keyword and rogue keyword so let's go over those keywords real quick i want to start with rogue what does Rogue mean? It means in the squadron phase, instead of just only being able to attack or move, he can attack or move or move or, or attack in any order. That's what Rogue means in the squadron phase. Next up is Cloak. So Cloak, uh, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to pull out the squadron real quick because I don't 
ever deal with Cloak too often. So Cloak is at the end of the squadron phase, you may move up to distance one, even if you are engaged. So for example, if Kanan Jarrus was engaged with these TIE Defenders, at the end of the squadron phase, you say, hey, you know what, I'm going to use Cloak. Well, I can move within distance one, so I can move this far away uh, from that squadron. And guess what, now I'm out of engagement range of them. That's what Cloak does. It's very useful for also getting ships to kind of back away, potentially out of flak fields as well. His next keyword is Assault, and I'm going to get into his card ability here in a moment. Give me, give me time. The next keyword here is Assault, which Assault is uh, if you are attacking a ship. Um, you know what? I'll just pull out Gar. Where's Gar's action? Or a, there we go, Gauntlet Fighter. So Assault is you can move and attack. Or that's Rogue. Whoops. Assault. While attacking a ship, you may spend one die with a hit icon. If you do, the defender gains one gray token of your choice. So if Kanan flies up, shoots this Gazanti with two blue die. Uh, in this case, he didn't get it, so let's try again. Okay, he's got one blue icon with a blue die. So in the resolve attack effect, you say, Hey, uh, I am spending this one blue die. You remove it out of the attack pool. And now I'm giving you a raid token. And you assign them a raid token they currently don't have. If they don't have any, you just give them one of your choice. Um, and again, Raid just prevents them from resolving that command until they clear the, re the, the Raid token, uh, as defined in the Raid rules. So that's what Assault does. So what is Kanan Jarrus' card ability? Well, while attacking a ship, you may spend one die with the Critical Icon. If you do, the Defender gains one Raid token of your choice. So essentially, he gets double Assault, double, double chance to hand out Raid tokens. So let's roll his attack pool again. Hey, he rolled a hit and a crit. Which means, and again, you can only resolve an ability's effect once, so he can spend the hit icon to assign a raid token. That assault ability's been resolved, but guess what? Now he's got a card ability where he can spend a critical icon and assign a raid token, and he's resolved that ability. He doesn't deal any damage with this attack, and the defender can't scatter it or cancel die, because again, it's the attacker's turn. It's the resolve attack step. Uh, he can assign out these raid tokens. Um, well, if he, for example, though, had rolled a double hit, uh, he can only spend one hit to assign one raid token, and then he would deal one damage. Same deal if he had rolled a double crit. Uh, he can only spend one crit to assign one raid token. He can't, he can't just resolve his ability over and over and over again. That's not how Armada works. Um, but again, if he rolls a hit and a crit, he could spend both to assign two raid tokens. That's Kanan Jarrus. Um, so that is the Hawk 290. Uh, I do appreciate you guys watching. There's no other crazy interactions or crazy things going on that I'm aware of. But of course, if you've seen anything, if you have questions on something, please be sure to leave a comment. Let me know. Uh, I'm going to be heading to Las Vegas to go to Las Vegas Open this coming week. So you won't, you'll see me streaming or trying to stream. Um, so I'll, you know, if you guys are there, come say hello to me. I'll be dressed up in my, uh, uniform and, and all that. You guys are great. And Hey, I'll catch you all next time.